In this topic, we're going to look at why are species endangered. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, when is a species said to be endangered? Why are species endangered? And why is the black rhino endangered? I'm sure you've heard of the term endangered. So how do scientists know when to term a species endangered? This is when the species is threatened to extinction and the numbers are reduced to a critical level. The population is so low that reproduction is affected and it cannot maintain its numbers. So why are species endangered? There are obviously a number of reasons and many of these involve human activities, for example the destruction of a habitat, pollution, introduction of other species, overexploitation, and wars. Disease may also lead to the loss of organisms within a species. So let's have a look at each of these in more detail. Starting off with the destruction of a habitat. Can you think of some reasons why a habitat might be destroyed? Timber cutting destroys forests and endangers species, for example the orangutan. Industrial and agricultural developments threaten many plant species of the Amazon forest. Clearing river banks destroys the natural habitat of otters and beavers. And modern farming methods remove trees and they also drain wetlands. This endangers the species that live there. In Central America, traditional coffee plantation has coffee bushes grown in the shade of large trees. The canopy of these trees supports the diverse variety of species and the crop requires few pesticides. To increase productivity, modern coffee plantations use a variety of coffee that require full sun. This means that the trees will be removed. Large amounts of pesticides also destroy the pests. Now it's important to maintain the biodiversity of organisms in a habitat because many of these species may have economic importance outside their habitats, for example, pollinating insects. As the natural habitats are destroyed, those remaining become increasingly fragmented and isolated and these patches cannot support a species. For example, in Central America, these two cute creatures, the spider monkey and tufted capuchin, have large ranges, so when there's fragmentation occurring, they are the first to disappear. Pollution, for example, an increase in carbon dioxide increases global warming. Overfertilization leads to river pollution and eutrophication, which you can see in this picture here. Heavy metal pollution. Oxides of sulfur leads to acid rain. And oil spills, which you can see in this picture here. Insecticides build up along the food chain. Introduction of other species. Humans often introduce other species that outcompete with the natural ones. Almost half of all the small to medium sized Australian marsupials have been killed by competition. When rabbits were introduced and then predation was introduced by foxes and cats. In Zimbabwe, the lantana flower, which you can see here, was introduced. And this is an invasive species that spreads quickly and it's poisonous to animals. Hybrids also threaten the original species. Overexploitation includes hunting, fishing and poaching. Hunting, humans hunt tigers for sport, crocodiles and foxes for their skins, animals, for example, elephants for ivory and rhinoceros for their horn. One particular animal that is of great concern in Africa is the black rhino, which is poached for its horn. So this is going to be exported to the Middle East and Asia, and this horn is going to be used as a handle or as traditional medicine. Now, although there's a ban on the trade of rhino horns, these rhinos are still being poached for their horns, bringing the black rhinoceros to near extinction. So that includes poaching. Overfishing has led to incidental events, for example, dolphins getting caught in tuna nets. 
Wars have led to the destruction of habitats and the death of other organisms as well as humans. The use of Agent Orange in the 1960s destroyed forests and other wildlife. Disease The introduction of foreign, often human pathogens and diseases and overcrowding due to habitat loss increases the spread of disease. Okay, let's have a look at why black rhinos are endangered. Now, black rhinos are found in southern and eastern Africa. There used to be hundreds of thousands of black rhinos in sub-Saharan Africa. And by 1970, the population declined to 70,000. In 1993, only 2,300 remained and were recorded in only four countries, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya and Namibia. The black rhino is killed for its horn, which is used to carve into handles in the Middle East, like you can see in this picture here. And it's also used in traditional medicines in Asia. So how can we conserve the black rhino? So to prevent the extinction of the black rhino and to increase the population numbers, there are a few conservation measures that have been put into place. So these include a ban on rhino trade, or ban on trade in the rhino horn, which was implemented by the CITES, which is the Con Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species. Protected areas where black rhino live in parks and reserves alongside other endangered species, for example, elephants. These are patrolled by armed guards. Removal of the horns of the rhinos so that the rhinos don't get killed unnecessarily and there's no incentive for the poachers to shoot them. And captive breeding so that the young rhino are raised in reserves and zoos and then reintroduced back into the wild. What are the problems of conserving the black rhino? So although you've got these conservation me measures in place, there are still some difficulties to overcome. For example, the ban on the trade in rhino horns has increased the price of the horns on the black market. Governments cannot afford to protect the rhinos in protected areas, so the rhinos are still being killed. The poachers kill the guards that protect the rhinos due to the high value of the rhino horn. And restricted number of alleles within each population. So there are about 75 separate populations of black rhino. And these are small and widely separated. So there's a restricted number of alleles within each population. For this species to survive, there's a need to increase the genetic variability. So this could be done by moving one rhino from one area to another, but some subspecies of rhino are adapted to their own local environment. And finally, the rate of reproduction is slow. The females only have their first calf when they're six to seven years old, and the gestation period is 419 to 478 days. And there's also an interval of two to three years between the calves, making an increase in the population very slow. So in summary, we looked at when a species is said to be endangered, the different reasons why species are endangered, and then we also looked at the example of why the black rhino is endangered. And that concludes our lesson, the end.